Hello, hello. Welcome on in to another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. Today we're going to be talking about Red Breast 12. We have in front of us their normal release and their cask strength edition. All right, Red Breast. Wait, All right, so this is a single pot still, which is the was at the time the most popular style of Irish until blends drove it out, most unfortunate. But anyway, basically a single pot still is malted and unmalted barley to screw it to the tax man as they should because those dirty British bastards. <laughs> so, it wouldn't want anything to do that. So there's no freaking grains in it because that stuff sucks. Anyway, the red breast is a bird in Ireland that uh, it sings in the winter, one of the few, and it stays there in the winter because, well, the bird's crazy and it's freaking cold in Ireland. But, you know, whatever works. It's the largest selling pot still in the world. Um, like I said, it's owned by Irish soldiers. It also makes the spots. It makes Middleton all the other good Irish whiskeys that are out there, basically. So originally it started in 1857 with a W&A Gilby, which basically bought stocks of casks um, from Jameson and they, and they sto stored them underneath this giant warehouse they owned because they also were merchants for wine. So they had crap loads of sherry casks that they would keep underneath the distillery and so they'd buy that bulk whiskey, stick it in there and age it, and they were always a minimum of six years old. By 1870 they had 300,000 gallons of, of whiskey aging underneath their warehouses. Uh, which is a ton of freaking whiskey. A lot of whiskey. So prior to 1903, it was marketed as the John Jameson and Sons Castle JJ Whiskey of Accord 12 year old. And it was a so much a bottle. That is a ridiculously That's long a name. Mouthful. So there, uh, in 1912, their chairman of the board decided to nickname it Red Breast, because that's hell, that's a lot easier to say, number one, and it became a 12 year old whiskey, and he was an avid bird watcher, so that's why it became known as the Red Breast. And so then in 1968, uh, they tried to stop selling it to them actually. And there was so much outcry, they said, fine, we'll sell it to you. And then for another 20 years in production, to 1995, Gibbons actually shut down and sold it back to Irish Distillers Limited, which shut it down for about five years. And then back in 1991, this beautiful 12 year old was reintroduced. Thank you, God. So, this is like I said, one of the best Irish on the market. Um, they also came out in 2000 with a terrible, terrible blend of whiskey that they said they'd like not to talk about but to tell you that it sucked and to never speak of its name again. <laughs> they also, one of the cool things about them is they actually use a, this is triple distilled, which is interesting, because almost all Irish is, but this one's, like I said, it's still a pot still, but this is a, a wash, a faints, and a spirit still, which is, most only use a wash and a spirit still, but they have a faints in between, so, to get to take care of. So it's really interesting to do for them. So, it's some of the largest copper pot stills in the world, and they have three sets of these at Middleton, so these are just massively putting this stuff out. So this very first one is the regular 12, it is a 40% aged Oloroso Spanish sherry casks and also in bourbon. Um, this is also called the Priest bottle because back then, um, priests always had good whiskey. Even during the terrible times of Ireland, the priests always had it. So Red Breast is the priest whiskey. Yeah. So good for them. Smart clergymen. It's good oh, yeah. Catholics drinking the, uh, the Irish whiskey, and I appreciate that. <laughs> so, and like I said, it's triple stilled, and so let's go into the nosing tasting of this fantastic whiskey. Yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite Irish whiskeys mm -hmm. all around. I'm happy with just the regular 12. Sure. Mine Cast too. drinks great. Oh, it smells good. Vanilla, honey, There's caramel. It's definitely malt. Definitely malt. Yeah. Sweet sherry. Nutty. Mm -hmm. Waxy walnut. Dried fruits. Yep. Floral. There's a grassiness to this. There's a floral component of it as well. There's butter cookies uh, mm -hmm. in there, along with the yeah. butter scotch that I typically Buttery. get from malt. This is butter cookie on top of that. Mm -hmm. It's got uh, rose petals, mm -hmm. unbaked dough, some flour. It just smells this beautiful. Is so good. It smells much richer and deeper Definitely. than 40%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's just, the nose is not 40 no. for sure. No, it's got a slight burn on it, even on the nose. It does. And, and not that just um, mm. nail polish remover burn that you get sometimes mm -hmm. with the 40% right. that are run through the columns. Yeah. This is a rich. Rich, deep, dark, forty percent. Yeah. So since it's on a copper pot still, I'm sure that makes a difference being in that rather well, than yeah. you know, nasty stuff comes out of column still. Mm. Oh, oh, it's so good. Oh, that's my happy place. See, this is really oily too. It is really oily. It's got a good spice on it. Mm. Vanilla and caramel. It's a slight hit of citrus on it. Mm -hmm. It's nutty. It's mm -hmm. floral. Very creamy. It's walnutty. Yeah, oh, it's good. It is oh. a rich, round journey across Hints your palate. Hints of sherry in there. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a beautiful whiskey. Uh, 
It tastes lower proof than it smells. It does. Oh, but I can, it's so I can... rounded and buttery and creamy. Yeah, and usually I'd say a quarter percent is a background. This is not a background whiskey. Not this one, a background whiskey. Forty percent. You can sit on this thing for an hour and be thrilled. Yes. This yes, is you could. just oh, so good. I love red breast. I do too. This is gotta be yeah. Basically, all their upper end Jameson, you know, Middleton products are just any single pot still. It's just awesome. Yeah. Love this stuff. This this and the spots are kind of like head to head for top Irish for me. Oh, uh, and then Middleton. Oh, Middleton, so good. We will get into Middleton at another point. That is, that is as good as this is gonna be. Middleton is even better. But they'll get at another point. What you got for water? What's the water doing? Oh, so this. the water uh, on the nose brings out more of the fruity aspects. I'm getting more peaches, I'm getting more apricot. Um, right. But on the palate, it actually brings out more of a saltiness to it. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. That's really, really yummy. Saltiness. That's interesting. A little sharper, and then a little bit of brine, yeah. a little bit of salt in there. Hmm. Oh. It's interesting. Really? That's it different. It doesn't hit me mid palate. Yeah. It actually kind of finishes with yeah, like it's a on saltiness. the saltiness. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. It it's not bad. Salty. And the fruitiness kind of pops out of the glass. I'd... It's, it's not bad. It's definitely different. That changes it completely. Uh huh. It's really good though. Either way, I think you'd be really happy. Yeah. What's your preferences? I think the way on this one completely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I agree. This is great whiskey. Yeah. All right. All right. My favorites. The big hitter. Big dogs here. This is a 12 year cast strength. This one is, happens to be a. Uh, this came in 2011 when they first started putting out. 58.2 percent. This is also aged in uh, Larosa Spanish and in bourbon. This is non chill filter the way whiskey ought to be. No, which means there's no water added. It's not. It's not chilled down to there's some cloudiness or whatever when you do it straight from the cask. So every one of these can be a little bit different than what you find on the shelf. Um, so, but yeah, this is just. This is also I know. I'm sure most of you are fans of the Whiskers. This is Rex's favorite. So oh, yeah. one of ours as well. Mm -hmm. The color difference uh, is pretty substantial. Yeah, uh, you can definitely tell oh, that yeah. even being the same age, uh, the amber. Uh, way dark. The red notes are showing up a lot more on the cask strength mm -hmm. than they were. They didn't have to curve it down or anything, yeah. so no. it makes sense. You know, it's almost twenty percent more malty and fruity. Oak and vanilla. Oak, sherry and nutty. Fruit and the sherry. I also get kind of like a like pencil note mm -hmm. to it. I'm getting dirt in in, in dirt. a wood component. So you said pencil. Yeah, the pencil. oak. Yeah. Pink oh, it's so fruity. Pink Starburst. Grassy. Pink Starburst. Mm -mm. You know? Definitely. Toasted oak, honey and vanilla. Yeah, I like candy. I think everybody knows that at this point. I compare a lot of whiskeys to different candies and foods because that's what I like. This has apricot well, and peach in it. It's good if you can do that because it gives other people the option to go, oh, okay, I'm going to go try the pink Starburst and see yeah, what it tastes like. Exactly. And if I'm going to like that particular yeah. flavor. For sure. Uh, Before they go spend how much on a bottle? Yeah, okay. So price wise, this one you can get for about fifty to sixty, the regular twelve, and then the twelve cast rank can anywhere from seventy five to one hundred, depending on your market. So, uh, so I can so totally good. get behind that pink Starburst. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's totally there. there. It's yeah. totally that. Wouldn't be a no. It wouldn't be something that I would have thrown out there. But yeah, it's. You know, it's I'm always picking up weird things on whiskey. All right. Uh, this one to me has more of a coffee note to it. I get espresso. Mm. That oily espresso. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. That's all I have to say about that. Yep. No, it's cinnamon, Ooh. it's oak, there's pepper, there's vanilla. Yeah, it's like, you think the other one was oily. This is oily. Mm -hmm. This is rich, mouth coating. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I get a sponge cake. A little more burn. It's fruity. Oh, it's... With a little bit of citrus. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good. This is so much more complex, too. Mm hmm It's it's still, even though the proof is higher, it's still well-rounded. It is. Mm -hmm. It's not, you, you know, overly... You can taste overly the proof. It, it definitely shows up on the it, it... Yeah, it's got the honey and the vanilla. Um, yeah, you know, it's got some more oakiness and malt. Like a toasted oakiness in this one more than anything. But also get like a white chocolate apricot in it. It's mm. really interesting. Mm. A little cherry too. 
This is just a complex. This is this is just yeah. glorious. I could spend a lot of time just sipping Ooh. on this and finding new things and enjoying it. Every yeah, these are whiskeys that you should always replace. Sure, punish. Yeah, I agree. And drink more sherry because it's got it's a dying industry. We need sherry for our red breasts. And that's important. And other things. But and, and good scotches, obviously. Drop yeah. of water. Drop of water and the cast strength made it a round, cohesive beverage. Mm -hmm. The journey is a lot smoother across your palate. It's not as spiky and pointy. Mm -hmm. uh, not that it was overly dramatic mm -hmm. before, but with the drop of water, it becomes a mm -hmm. creamier journey across your palate. Mm. Okay. All I can say is, oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful product. Yeah. So, Red Breast does nothing wrong. As far Red as Breast I'm good. Concerned. So good. These two products are fantastic. Yes. Absolutely. Bye. Keep on crusading for the whiskey in your glass. Cheers. Cheers.